Today we're taking a look at the Fujifilm X-T30. Now in recent years, a lot of older Fujifilm cameras are starting to become somewhat classics. A lot of people are sourcing these older cameras now and they're becoming a lot more popular and becoming way more expensive on the used market. So we thought, why not take a look at an older generation of Fujifilm? So today we're taking a look at the X-T30. Let's start off by taking a look at the sensor that we have inside of this camera. So the sensor inside of this camera is an APS-C size sensor. So we're talking a 1.5 crop around that mark there. And this is a previous generation. So this is the CMOS X-Trans APS-C sensor and it's the CMOS 4 sensor. Sorry, that was a mouthful. I'm probably in the wrong order, but this is the fourth generation of the X-Trans sensor. Let's pop this back. And as we take a look at the body here, it's very similar to say the X-T3. And people used to say this is kind of the baby X-T3. So if you ever bought an X-T3, this will kind of be the secondary smaller camera you'll buy alongside with it. As you can see on the front, we've got the push release here for the cap. Um, we've got the old school switch that we, we came used to with the T-series of cameras, which have now been taken away on some of the newer cameras. So that's kind of nostalgic now to have that. You'll notice here that, that the grip is quite a slim grip on this camera here, which is quite similar to how the X-T3 was as well. And the scroll wheel at the front here is quite flush to the body. So as we're moving around, on the side here we have our ports. And on the ports here we have a top for a remote. Uh, and the second one there is a USB-C, and that doubles up as a headphone jack as well. I think there might be a, a microphone port you might be able to pop into that uh, USB-C as well using certain types of adapters. And then the bottom we've got here is a micro HDMI port. So quite versatile in what it can do. Just uses some weird techniques to get there. Taking a look at the back of the camera here, we can see that it looks very, very similar to a, a miniature X-T3, which is quite nice. And I think that's why this particular camera is getting a little bit more popular now. We've seen the average prices of these things are jumping up around 500, five, to about 500 to 600 pounds now on the used. So it's still a bargain to be had, but the price is creeping up because previously the price was a little bit lower than that. The screen that we have here on the back is not a fully articulating screen. It's the one that we're used to, which is a tilting screen, which some fans prefer because they feel like it's less likely to break because of all the maneuverability. But either way, the new articulating screens and these ones are built really solid from Fujifilm. There is a lack of buttons on the back in comparison to some other Fuji cameras. Uh, we've got the joystick down here, as you can see. And what I'll do is I'll just get a nice close-up for you guys to see now. So if we can go around here. As you can see, this camera is built really well, actually. I don't believe this one's fully Weber sealed, but the textures and the build quality of this is kind of what you expect from Fujifilm. It's not like their plastic line of cameras, which they have. This is still a really nice built camera. The battery that this camera takes is the old school generation as well. So the one that we've been used to for a long time, which everyone's got multiple ones of these. And inside there is where the SD card slot goes as well. Close that one back up. You can see here now we have got a circular viewfinder with the automatic uh, recognition there. Viewfinder button to the, to the right of that. And also the buttons and another scroll wheel here that we can see. When we're looking at the top of the camera, it's reminiscent to what Fujifilm have been doing in recent years. And we've got all the toggles and dials and everything that we kind of need. So going over it briefly, here we can see we've got exposure compensation, which we can rotate clearly here. Above that, we've got a functionality button. We've also got a screw in thread here for the shutter, for the shutter release. So if we did want to get a wired port into that, we can kind of wire uh, a trigger into that, which is quite nice. Here, which is quite different to say the X-T3 series and things like that, we actually have an auto switch. So we can just switch the camera into auto using that switch there, which is quite handy to have if you just wanted to suddenly go from a manual to an auto experience and then go back and forth. Here we have our shutter speeds, which you'll all be familiar with now if you use Fujifilm cameras. And then the left side here, we have 
all that things like single shoot, continuous low, continuous high, the bracketings, getting into the movie mode dials there, and then some advanced modes as well as panoramic modes, which we can see here. Sorry. And lastly, what you'll notice on this camera, which is not on the X-T3, is a little switch here. Take a look there. That one's actually to release the flash, which is uh, quite a thing to see because it's quite sealed here. So you don't expect there to be a flash on this camera. It's sealed so very well. It's hidden very nicely on this little X-T30. But let's show you how that pops up. We push our button here. How nice is that? Yeah, hidden away pretty nicely. Okay, let's take a look at the menus a little bit here. Let's dive in. Let's make sure you guys are in focus again. Hopefully we've got battery this time. And I just want to dive into the film simulation. So as far as the menus go and things like that, it should be very, very similar to all of the older cameras. What we are getting with this camera in particular, though, we are getting 4K video with it. Um, I'm not sure if they introduced F-Log into this camera, but there may have been with a firmware update. If not, you know how Fujifilm are with their Kaizen updates, if they ever put them out nowadays, but sometimes they will incorporate those things into it. So if you're looking for a camera with great megapixels, 26, and 4K video, you can get that inside this X-T30. So as we're used to, this camera can shoot in RAW and can shoot in JPEG as well. A lot of people that are using these older Fujifilm cameras are just using it for the JPEGs because the JPEGs are that good out of the camera on these things. You can add your grain effects, got your color chrome, so you can do full adjustments that you need to yourself. So you can basically edit your photos with inside the camera and get the look that you need, which is really nice. So let's take a look at what film simulations there are. You probably be familiar with this now, but sometimes there's some added bonuses for certain cameras and some cameras are lacking newer ones, new presets and film simulations that the newer cameras have. So let's see what this one has. So we have Provia, we have Velvia, we have Astia, we have Classic Chrome, Pro Negative High, Pro Negative Standard, Eterna, Acros, Monochrome, and Sepia. So we don't have some of the newer film presets that um, have came in the, the latest cameras, but still we have all the most necessary ones. Hope you enjoyed this. I'm gonna leave you guys with some sample images taken with the X-T30 so you can kind of see what you expect out of this camera. Thanks for watching.